the thing, the suggestions down. Come up with some five things that you guys can do to fix it so that this doesn't happen again. If it means that you need to set your clock, your, your alarm an hour earlier, maybe that's an idea. If it means you need to go to sleep earlier, maybe that's an idea. You know, write these things down just as they come without placing any kind of judgment to them or anything like that. Like, oh no, that's dumb. I'm not waking up an hour early, <laughs> earlier, or I'm not going to sleep earlier, you know, without placing any judgment on the alternatives, just make a list of them. Um, and I think it also, this exercise also helps because you'll, you're working, you're starting to work together. So whereas before this conversation, you were both still trying to get out all of your anger and, you know, address the issues and say why you were hurt and say, you know, all of these other things. Now you're working together. You're not fighting each other. You're working together to come up with some alternatives to, you know, figuring this thing out, right? Um, so then the next thing is now you'll go to your alternatives and you'll say, okay, we've list, we've come up with all these, these, you know, ideas on ways we can fix this. So what are the best solutions of all of these things that we came up with these five things? What are the best things? Is it really best for me to, you know, go to sleep an hour earlier or wake up an hour earlier? Like what is, you know, and, and really narrow it down to a couple of things that are actionable things that you can do. Um, don't put, don't agree to things that you're not going to do for the sake of ending the conversation. You know what I mean? You need to figure out, okay, is this something that I'm going to do or not? If you're not going to do it, keep it real. Say, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, <laughs> and think of something else. You know, if you get, if you draw all these things down, you talk about them all and you realize, yeah, neither of us are going to do any of these things. And you need to go back <laughs> and come up with some other ways to resolve it. You know, um, you can't just leave it where it is because you're both, now you both walk away feeling like, okay, well that was a complete waste of time, <laughs> you know? Um, so that, so evaluate, like I said, uh, evaluate what your, what your alternatives were and come to the best solution. Um, let's see. Then the seventh thing is plan to reassess the solution. So if the, if your, whatever issue is you had, right, if whatever the issue was that you had was kind of major and it's more than just, I'll set my alarm clock an hour earlier or I'll go to sleep an hour earlier. Um, it's something that's going to be like a, <laughs> a pretty big deal to resolve. Then there might be a few things that you have to do you know, to, to figure out if this is something that is going to be resolved or you need to approach this a different way. Um, it's always good to come back and look at what your progress, um, to, you know, so for instance, if you get in an argument tonight, you know, you, you get in your argument tonight and you decide tomorrow we're going to figure this out. You figure it out the next day, you come up with your list of solutions, you pick your one or two best solutions, you go for it. And two weeks later, you come back at this point and you say, all right, are things working out? And it could be just in your head, you know, as you're moving through these two weeks or however long that you guys determine as you're moving through this time, it could be you just say, kind of making, taking mental notes in your head and saying, all right, this is working or this isn't working. Or, you know, if we did that a little bit differently, I'd feel a little bit better about how this is working, but just keep in mind how things are working. And then when you guys, should plan to come back together about this topic and say, you know, this is working. Or if it, if it is working fine, then you probably don't need to come back to it and reassess what you're doing to, to make it, you know, reassess things because you're in a good place for both of you. That goes for both of you. If you're both in a good place and it's not an issue, then you don't need to come back. But if there's still some, you know, somebody, one or both of you aren't feeling so good about something, then you need to, do need to say, you know, hey, we need to talk about this again because it's kind of working, but I need, I'm not 100% feeling so great about this, you know? So you do need to come back if, if one or both of you are not feeling like this was a win-win <laughs> and just reassess it, you know, make some tweaks, make whatever changes you need to do, but reassess it. And again, guys, I know this probably sounds like, huh, this is like really formal and everything, but honestly, for, for things to, to make sense in your marriage, there are you have to have some kind of order 
you know, and this, this is, uh, these steps are ordered steps that you guys can, um, follow to come to a solution to make an impact in your marriage. Um, so then the last thing is, um, to make sure to attend to the needs for healing in the relationship. Um, cause you know, conflict creates stress and when you're sharing these deep, <laughs> good monkey, <laughs> when you're sharing these frustrations with your spouse, um, you're going more than just surface. You're going more than just like, you know, a conversation that you might have at work. You know, you're going deep because we're not talking about a report that you didn't print out or, you know, coming back late from lunch. We're talking about some serious stuff. We're talking about your heart, you know, and your feelings and your emotions and all of this makes us so vulnerable. Um, so when it comes to these conversations and, you know, getting emotional about things is, it takes a lot out of you. When you're having arguments, when you're, you know, all stressed out, it takes a lot out of you emotionally. So it's important that once you guys are like kind of back in your groove and you've figured this problem out, um, that you come back and you just make sure that you're doing your parts to, to love each other. Um, always like laying that foundation that you love each other and showing that you love each other in everything that you do. Yeah, you're gonna have ups and downs. You're gonna have problems. You're gonna have, you know, <laughs> issues with each other. That's just normal. That's normal in life. You're two individuals coming together. You're gonna have differences. But if you come to together agreeing and knowing that when issues come up, you're going to work together to solve them, then, then you can't really expect anything anything else you know what i mean like you you need to approach this, approach your marital situation um knowing that you're going to work together to fix whatever problems arise no matter how difficult they are um and so it's important when you you know fix your problems and things are back to normal that you are um pouring those pouring that love into your relationship on a consistent basis i talked once about emotional our emotional bank accounts and the importance of continuing, continuously pouring into each other's emotional bank accounts so that when you do encounter problems, when, you know, when problems do arrive, arise, you are not approaching them from the standpoint of, you know, you, of not having any um, past good feelings about this spouse to rely on. So if you and I, if, if my husband and I never do anything fun together, if we never have a laugh together, if we never go out to dinner together, if we never cuddle, you know, I'm not going to have any good, hardly any good feelings to reflect on when I'm in a moment of, um, frustration with him. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stop and think, Oh, well, I remember the time he, we had that nice walk along the, the beach. I'm not going to have anything to refer to, to refer back to, you know? So if we're not, continuously making these emotional deposits into each other's banks, we're not gonna have anything to fall back on when problems arise. So it's important, like I said, yes, you're gonna have problems, yes, you're gonna have issues, but make sure through all of that that you're continuing to pour into each other's emotional bank accounts um, and building each other up so that there's padding when you have these falls in your relationships. So that you're somewhere for you to fall to, to fall back on. You can fall back on your memories of, you know, your good memories, your happy memories, the happy things, the good things that your husband or wife have done for you or with you. Um, so make sure that you are, once you've resolved your problem, once you've come to a happy place, make sure that you are continuing to fill those emotional bank accounts um, and reminding your spouse how much you you love them and you're, you're, you're thankful that you are, um, you know, willing to work together to make things right. Um, and that includes making sure that you're praying together, making sure that you're praying separately, <laughs> you know, for each other, for your marriage, um, on a consistent basis. All of that pours into the emotional bank account um, for when situations come up that you're not so, that, aren't, that don't feel so good, because that'll happen. No matter what stage of marriage you are, or dating or relationship that you're in, you're gonna have conflict. So knowing how to resolve those issues is super important. It's not something that 
it's not the same for everyone. And so these steps are more so of a guideline for conversation to occur. Um, but it's, it's, important not to, it's important to address the issues when they arrive and not to sweep them under the rug because that is probably one of the worst things you can do um, with conflict to just sweep it under the rug because it doesn't disappear. It's going to remain and it'll get, <laughs> get to a point where um, you're now at crisis, right? So, um, so again, these steps, I hope they're helpful for, for you in addressing different issues in marriage. Um, they might need to be tweaked or whatever for whatever your, your situation or your need is. But that's what I, I, I have for you today, some steps for problem solving, problem solving in your marriage. Um, so, okay, so the thing that I was going to tell you about is I am going to be, so all the talks that we've had, right? We talked about um, the roommate trap. We talked about the Bruce Jenner syndrome. We talked about um, if you're wifey material, all of these things that we've talked about. Um, I've kind of been keeping notes. And so I am going to be putting together a, like a quick little workbook type of thing um, and making it available for anybody that just want it is either going through like premarital counseling, the five A's, yes. Anyone that's going through like premarital counseling, um, anyone that is considering marriage, anyone that's dating, there are just some, some things to think about really as you're, as you're striving to, you know, walk in your Christian faith and, and, you know, there are some things that you want to think about and consider and some, some red flags that you want to be on the lookout for. So I've com I'm com going to be compiling some of the things that I've talked about, some of the points, some of the key things that I talked about um, as it relates to marriage and dating and relationships um, into like a little workbook that you can just download and print. Okay, so I'll tell you more about that once it's ready. And I hope that's something that you guys will enjoy just you know, something that you can refer to now and then. Um, I still pull out my uh, premarital counseling book <laughs> every now and then and just kind of look and see what I, you know, how I've progressed. Um, so it's cool. It's cool. So good. Good. Good to hear somebody's excited about it besides me. <laughs> all right, guys. So that's all for today. Thank you for joining. I'll be back tomorrow with more tips and more stuff to talk about. Um, so I'll see you then. Till then, take care, you guys. Bye.